in this video we are now going to start uh, looking at if we place objects that have point group symmetry into the lattice points cells of our lattice. So in the last video we looked at the actual point symmetry of the lattices themselves and now we want to look at what happens to the point symmetry of the lattices when we place objects such as uh, atoms or molecules or things like that into the points or cells of our lattice. And so these may or may not have the full holohedral symmetry. Uh, and the crystal which results may consequently be invariant only under a subgroup of the operations of its holohedry. Uh, thus the derivation of all possible space groups is a systematic study of the reduction of the holohedry of each type of lattice to its subgroup by inserting symmetrical objects in the lattice cells, then removing symmetry operations in a given holohedry. And so remember, we got this table in the last video of the holohedry of the Brevais lattices. And so these are sort of the, the point groups of these types of lattices. And so the actual lattices have a point group because you can rotate uh, and reflect those around and you should be able to get those to be superimposed again on the lattice by doing that. Uh, and so doing this we can distinguish many groups in a single crystal system so by breaking it down into what are called the hemihedry, the hemihedral. Uh, they are called hemihedral because their point groups are subgroups of the giving holohedry. And so this is the holohedry and hemihedry of the Brevais lattices. And so in the gray rows here, I put the, the holohedry. So that's just the stuff from this table up here. And then these in the uh, white rows above them are the hemihedry of those, uh, of those types of, of lattices there. So when the point group is reduced to one in the following table, the space group falls into that system. Uh, and so once again, these here on the right, so the ones in red are the holohedry and the ones in black are the hemihedry, which are the things that we have up here in the white rows on that table. Uh, so the number of point groups in the last column is 32. So if you count it up all these, it would be 32, giving us 32 crystal classes divided into seven syngony or systems, which are these things in the left column here. So the point groups allowed in any given system are subgroups of the holohedry, which have not appeared in the table above it. Uh, in, in table two, which is what I've called this one here, and therefore are peculiar to the system. And so the hemihedry is essentially you take the holohedry and you start removing symmetry elements, which sort of uh, reduces it down uh, this line here, then down this line here, down this line, down this line, and so on. Uh, but only what only these ones in here would be still the trigonal or rhombohedral uh, uh, symmetry of our lattice here. And so if we have the D3D and then we remove some of those, uh, some of those diagonal reflection planes, we get this D3 here. Uh, and so then we can remove some of those like C2 uh, axial rotations that are perpendicular to the principal axis and we get the C3V here and then we can remove the reflection planes V and it brings us down to C3 and so by removing symmetry elements from the the holohedry we get down into our hemihedry there. So we can identify the site symmetry as the points in the lattice where the the uh, the symmetry operations in H which are a subgroup of G leaves the point unmoved and so at the lattice points uh, which would be like A in this image here, the number of of symmetry operations will be equal to the number, the holohedral points. Uh, but in other positions, uh, we will get these uh, hemihedral points. So at A, we have the holohedral C6V. But if we placed an object here at B or at C, we would now move down to C3V, which is the uh, hemihedral 
Hedry of C6V. And if we placed one at D here, that would give us C2V, which is Hemi Hedry of the C6V. And so that makes sense because if we're at A here, we can sort of move this point to here, down to here, up to here, here, here. So six rotations. Whereas if we are at B, then to get the lattice back into to superimpose on itself, we'd need to move this corner here down to this corner. And so we have a C3. And if we're at D, then this point right here, if we want to rotate around D, would have to get moved down to here at A. And so that's a C2 uh, rotation axis there. And so uh, placing things at these different points on here will give us hemihedral points. So objects of a given point symmetry placed at all sites of the same symmetry uh, preserve the full symmetry of the empty lattice. So objects of lower symmetry uh, than their sites uh, make the crystal space group a subgroup of the empty lattice. And so we're saying if we put a C6V object here at A, then we, the lattice will still be a C6V. Uh, but if we put an object of lower symmetry here at this A point, then it would move it down to that symmetry. So uh, if we put like a C3V at this point here, the lattice would then become a C3V lattice. And so it would be a, a hemi hedry of the uh, of the hollow hedry of C6V. Uh, so every lattice from table 1.1 from above has objects of holohedral or hemihedral symmetry placed at the lattice points. So if you sort of go through every kind of combination of, of object symmetry in lattice symmetry, you will end up with 61 possible space groups. Uh, this is increased to 73 if we consider the fact that base-centered lattices can be reduced in more than one way by alternative orientation of a given hemihedral object. And then if we add these screw axes in the glide planes, we add even more, and that brings the total up to 230 space, gr space groups. And so these glide planes and screw axes, so a screw axis uh, and or a glide plane, rather, is a reflection that contains components in the reflection plane. I'll show a picture of this here in a minute. Uh, this means that the reflection can only be done in conjunction with a translation. Uh, such an operation might look like this in our uh, Coster sites notation here, uh, with these one halves because the translations are by half uh, in this instance. It, it doesn't have to be half, but it will be some fraction of a full translation. Uh, the screw axes are rotations that contain components in the axis of rotation. This means that the rotation can only be done in conjunction with the translation. Uh, such an operation might look like this. Uh, and so, you know, how in similarly to how like the improper rotation axis has to have a rotation and a reflection. Uh, it, it's not necessarily the case that one or the other is a symmetry operation, but both together are a symmetry operation. In this instance, we are saying that we are doing either a rotation or a reflection, and that ends up having to be in conjunction with a translation to get the full symmetry of it. And so this is the glide planes here. And so what you're doing is you translate this way, you reflect across this dotted line here, translate this way, reflect across the dotted line there, and you keep doing that over and over. And we, and the, the reason that this isn't just, you know, essentially, uh, you know, a translation is because we are doing fractions of a cell here. If these were full uh, cells here, then this would just be a regular sort of translation here uh, because we would be able to have another circle up on this side here because it would be a full cell translation, but we are doing uh, fractional cell translations. So this is sort of a three atom motif. So we have the small, medium, and large. We translate uh, down here by 
some fraction of the cell and then reflect so that the big one ends up on this side, the small one ends up on this side. Uh, and you can do this in 2D. Uh, you can do this, uh, you know, in these sort of large and sort of complex looking lattices like this. And then on this side, we have three dimensions where, see, we have this and we sort of uh, translate down here and then reflect across this middle line to here. Uh, then we do the same thing again. We translate down a fraction of a cell, reflect across the line to over here. Uh, and so uh, we just kind of keep repeating that. And so those are glide planes. And then these screw axes look like this, where we are sort of circling around. We're making sort of a helix shape uh, as we go along this axis here in the middle. And so there is a translation up here and then sort of a rotation over to here, then a translation up and a rotation over. And so we can see that this will be at different fractions of our cell. So the T equals one sixth of our cell, the T equals one fourth of our cell and so on and so forth. And so you can get different ones like this. So you can have, you know, these half cell things here. You can have three quarter cell things here. Uh, and so this will give you uh, a bunch of different new types of symmetries in your space groups. And so this is a list of all the space groups here. If we add in the glide planes and the screw axes and things like that. And so these are those, you know, funny names with the, the, N's and M's and P's and numbers and all that here, but uh, you can just you can see that there are a ton of them. In fact, 230 of them to be exact. Uh, but they do still fit into the triclinic, the monoclinic, ortholimbic, tetragonal, trigonal, hexagonal, and cubic here. Uh, and then there is this image, which just kind of shows little pictures of each type of lattice here, each of the 230 types of space groups here. Uh, and, you know, they're small and difficult to see on here, but if you want to take a closer look, you can uh, you can open this up in the link in the description. So I'll have the lecture notes linked to in the description. You can click this link right here, and it will bring you to the website that has this, and you can look closer at each of these. But uh, I just wanted to kind of show sort of, you know, how, just how many of these different space groups there are. Uh, and so, yeah, that is sort of how we get to the space groups from our Brevais lattices. Uh, so from the holohedry, uh, then we then have the hemihedry, which is sort of removing, uh, removing symmetry elements from the holohedric uh, space group or, or uh, point group rather. And then, you know, you can keep reducing that down depending on the symmetry of the object that you're placing into the lattice. So the lattice has the holohedric uh, point group here. But when you start placing objects into your lattice, which have lower symmetry than the lattice, then you move the, the lattice down to these hemihedric point groups here. And so that's kind of the take home message of this video. Uh, but anyway, I hope you found this video helpful and I will see you in the next one.